All right, so first and foremost, I just want to say Tesla is my favorite automobile company, especially a company that I want to purchase a vehicle in next. Um, that's something I've been talking about probably since uh, the past two years. I said my next vehicle is going to be a Tesla. Tesla is a technology company, um, and, and they are leading the charge in all electric vehicles all right they are and, and they're they are just growing and their stocks are growing revenue sharing is growing and all that so that's first and foremost so number two came across this article indicating that the first african-american ceo has been enlisted to join the Tesla board of directors. Now, first I want to congrats. I want to give a congrats to Linda Johnson rice. Okay. Linda Johnson rice is actually the, uh, actually the CEO of Ebony magazine. Okay. And, um, she has her own publishing company as well in mass media. She does books, magazines, television, cosmetics, Okay, this is a, a proven and a well-established African-American woman. She did Jet and Ebony magazine, all that stuff. Okay, I just want to give her congratulations, first and foremost. And you can call it what you want. I, I know what you guys are thinking. You know, um, you can say, well, this is a symbolic victory. She's in a token position. And, you know, the, the quiff of this is also the fact that um, I want to talk about Elon Musk in a minute as well. He's a CEO of Tesla, but they also enlisted <laughs> the CEO and founder of Fox. Okay. 21st century Fox, James Murdoch. Okay. And now he is a known white supremacist. It's, it's proven. It's, it's already proven just like Donald Trump. Um, so James Murdoch is also part of the board of directors for Tesla. Okay. Now, here's the thing, family. Like I said, you can call it what you want. But, you know, I just, again, I'm trying to bring light of the situation in terms of Linda Johnson Rice being enlisted to join the Tesla board of directors. Okay. Now they're calling this move a big move in Silicon Valley in Silicon Valley in terms of diversity. Cause uh, let me say something enlisting, uh, Linda Johnson rice and James Murdoch. That's what you call diversity, uh, white, a known white supremacist and a African American CEO of media publications such as Ebony magazine. Okay. So, <laughs> that that that's what you call diversity okay or actually i won't even get i won't even go there right now <laughs> I, I i won't even go there right now but uh what does this all mean right and, and here's some theories that i have regarding this uh election or i should say initiation of linda johnson rice to be a part of tesla's board of directors to me this is a token position okay this is a token position obviously tesla the ceo is elon musk elon musk is a billionaire i've talked about him before this is a guy that wants to colonize mars okay this guy wants to fly out rich one percenters, the elitists, and start a actual uh, another world in Mars. He wants to colonize Mars and start, you know, start life there with human beings. That's what he wants to do. <laughs> I actually talk about that. I talked about that. Uh, I think a story last year. I, I titled it uh, White Supremacy on Mars. 
And I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if that actually happened on another planet. Um, and they already did it to they already did it to Earth, of, of course. So it is what it is. But like I said, going back to this particular position, uh, enlisting Linda Johnson Rice, CEO of Ebony Operations. And, you know, actually, Ebony was already sold off. Um, so it's not, you know, officially black owned anymore, even though you still have. Uh, Linda Johnson Rice at the helm of the CEO, but the funding is coming from non-black people, right? But again, like I said, I, this position that she's in as far as the board of directors for Tesla, it is a token position in my opinion. And it's just a quote unquote symbolic victory in terms of having diversity for a Silicon Valley. We know that, you know, quote unquote African-Americans and technology is few and far in between. We don't have enough people in not only prominent positions, it's just basically a unicorn. You'll find somebody in a prominent position, um, but actually someone that calls the shots, okay? Someone that is actually involved in the process of developing such as Tesla's vehicles, their, uh, you know, their electronic powertrain system, you know, more hands on people being involved is a unicorn. You'll never find, you know, quote unquote, African-Americans in those kind of positions of power. I'm not even talking about, you know, engineers, software developers, you know, coders, you know, system engineers, et cetera, et cetera. The technical positions you'll you'll again, it's a unicorn. You'll never find those kind of people. What am I say? Those us. Us rather, you don't ever find us in those kind of positions. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I said, family, you know, this is a symbolic victory. I, 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 I give Linda Johnson Rice her props, but enlisting her on in the likes of James Murdoch as board of directors. <laughs> what does that tell you, family? Right. What does that tell you? All right. Now, I'm going to read a little bit of the article. Uh, I read a couple of articles, but one from CNBC.com is this is basically going to tell you uh, why they think enlisting Linda Johnson Rice was a good decision. It says uh, on Monday, Tessa welcome Ebony CEO Linda Johnson Rice, the second woman out of a group of nine board members in the first African American to hold that role, according to Fortune. We're very excited that Tesla has named Linda Johnson Rice to the board. Ronald C. Parker, chairman of the Alliance for Board Diversity, tells CNBC. Tesla is an innovative company and we'll like to see more blacks and women in each tech spaces. Tesla's announcement this week marks a break from the more common appointment of white males to board positions. A recent study by the Lines of Board Diversity and Deloitte, I guess that's how you pronounce that, shows that white men maintain the most board seats at Fortune 500 companies, although the percentage of women and minorities has increased in recent years. Caucasian men hold 69.2% of the seats analyzed, followed by Caucasian women who hold 16.4% according to the study prior to rice's appointment only two women have served on tesla's board in the past 14 year history the first is Lori yoler who was the board of directors from 2003 2006 and then board of advisors 2008 2013 the second is robin denholm who was appointed to the board of directors in 2014 women make up 85 percent of the purchasing decisions in the household so to have that female perspective on a board is beneficial says parker who is also the president and ceo of executive leadership council he adds that in black households that percentage is even higher why would that be <laughs> because again the black family structure has been on life support since the 1960s so therefore there is no there is no black men or hardly any black men being the head of the household because you have single parent mothers all right. Statistics say that the, 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 you know, as they say, 
Men lie, women lie, women lie, numbers don't. All right. So again, family, Linda Johnson Rice has been elected to be the, on the Tesla board of directors. I call it a token position, a symbolic victory. We don't need symbolic victories. We need permanent solutions. I do give her her props and I give her her congrats because again, we do need more, a whole lot more black people in technology industry positions, positions of power. Okay. And hands on positions decision-making positions and technical positions. We need way more people. You know, we, we uh, again, we're on YouTube and, and Google, but we don't know how the backend servers work. We don't know what an SRE is, which is a site reliability engineer. We don't know how our smartphones work, do we? We don't even know how the operating systems, the iOS and Android OSs work. We don't have enough black people in those positions in the technology industry. We need way more, but we need to start our own. Like I said, we need to start our own everything and not depend on them. All right. So anyway, family, those are my thoughts on that. Leave your comments down below about this black people in positions of power in technology companies and starting our own. Right. Give me your thoughts down below about that. And, uh, you know, Give your thoughts about what ways we should do that. We can support brothers like Daryl Cluis with blackspot.com, right? But again, that kind of stuff, we need to provide more funding for that. But we need more companies like a blackspot.com, right? We need to bring Black, Black Planet <laughs> from back in the day. But we need our own infrastructure, family. That's where it starts. Our own infrastructure, okay? Black-owned, all right? So anyway, family, those are my thoughts on that. Leave your comments down below in the comment section, family. Follow me on social media at The Black Separatist on Instagram and Twitter. Both links will be down below in the description. All right, family, if you have any questions or any other upcoming topics you want me to talk about, email me at gmogmedia at gmail.com. Until next time, family, Chauncey, a.k.a. The Black Separatist, signing out. Peace.